All across the world, there are stories of huge humanoids that terrify all around them through their monstrous strength and violent demeanor. Let's see what they could be like through speculative biology. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center. Giants have been a rather popular suggestion, and it's easy to see why. Given the way simply enlarging a human being so easily turns it into a source of awe and terror. They are like kaiju people, which should be really fun to work with. And speaking of giants, you could do me a big one by liking and subscribing if you like our videos. And now, without further ado, let's get started. It wasn't long ago that we began studying some of the other human species living in our world, and today we will be taking a look at one of the most evocative among them, one whose relationship and mutual antagonism with humanity has made it a fixture of stories and legends all across the world. Homo gigas, the giant. These hominids became larger as a result of the Ice Age, as a larger, stockier build helped them retain heat. However, it was food accessibility and deterring predation which further favored their increase in size, allowing them to reach their modern height of around 4.5 meters on average, or close to 15 feet. Of course, the basic body plan of a hominid could not have simply translated one to one as it grew in size having instead to adapt to the increasing weight being placed on its tissues. In order to combat the strain of their greater weight, their legs became much stronger and columnar to be able to support the rest of their body, and the broadening of their anatomy allowed them to spread their weight along a greater surface. At the same time, their upper bodies became much shorter, reducing the total weight their legs had to support. And, while ancient giants had a dense layer of hair around their bodies, modern giants are almost completely bald in order to better resist the heat, with their loose, wrinkly skin helping them dissipate heat more easily. Notably, as they increased in size, their arms became much shorter, reducing their weight, but this also meant a decrease in certain muscle groups. The arms of giants retain their strength, but their dexterity was severely decreased in the process, with their hands and fingers becoming much shorter and having a lower range of mobility. While their arms are still useful for foraging, digging for food, or moving around huge boulders to build makeshift shelters, tool usage is almost non-existent in giants. The only possible exceptions to this are their wielding of unearthed trees and throwing huge boulders, both of which are done as a show of strength, usually to scare off rivals and carnivores or to increase their status in their large groups they form, and as such require little more than brute strength to be effective. While giants throwing boulders is indeed an impressive sight, an even more impressive one would be seeing them manage to actually hit something. Another casualty of their increasing size was their noticeable intelligence, which they shared with other members of genus Homo. As they lost their manipulatory organs due to the decreasing dexterity of their hands, and since food was much easier to obtain and predation was much less of an issue, a higher degree of intelligence was not as advantageous to giants as it had been to other hominids. Added to this, the high caloric requirements of such a large brain made it a liability, giving an advantage to less intelligent individuals and resulting in the much smaller brain cavity they had, with the intelligence of giants ebbing away generation after generation. Yet, while their intelligence is low compared to that of humans, it is considered to be on par with that of elephants and great apes. They simply lack the biological tools to develop and use said intelligence in the way humans do. Like most hominids, including ourselves, the ancestors of the giants were omnivores, capable of feeding on a wide array of vegetable and animal food. 
However, their increasing size made energy efficiency a greater concern, starting a tendency towards herbivores. This diet made it easier for giants to obtain the resources needed to grow and reproduce compared to actively hunting for prey. And while adaptations to herbivory have been minimal, modern giants have noticeably stronger jaws and greatly enlarged intestines, which help them better digest their food. This adaptation is also observed in other primates as well, such as gorillas. That said, the giants are still perfectly capable of feeding on meat, even if they are not adapted to hunting. For instance, they will be perfectly fine with killing and eating cattle, which are often incapable of escaping due to being held inside pens. Another very common prey of theirs are unaware humans who stumble inside their shelters, inside which there is little they can do to protect themselves. As is common for herbivores, especially ones as large as the giants or the behemoth, a herbivore diet leaves them with a lot of energy available to protect themselves. While their large size alone is useful to deter most predators, any that actually try to prey on the giants will have to face their full might, with most predators being easily trampled to death in the process. Having evolved during and as a result of the Ice Age, as the ice receded and temperatures increased, giants began a sharp decline. While populations still live and thrive throughout the world, these are isolated and much smaller than before, both due to changing environmental conditions and the expansion of humanity reducing their habitat. After all, as humanity became increasingly more advanced, and developed weaponry far beyond anything giants were capable of dealing with, giant slaying became a common activity. At first it was a matter of driving giants away and preventing them from harming human beings, but soon people began slaying giants simply as a way of gaining glory and fame, further reducing the populations of these beings that, just as a reminder, are intelligent relatives of humans. As a result of this, many giants that remember such slayings will actively attack human beings in retaliation, only worsening this conflict. In modern times, attempts have been made at keeping giants safe and increasing their populations, but cooperation with them has been very difficult, to say the least. And that's it for speculative biology look into giants. Now, I know I have a bit of a thing for turning humanoid characters and mythical beings into non-humanoids. I mean, y'all saw what I did to witches. But really, after reading as much as I could on the subject, the main and almost only thing uniting the stories about giants is the fact that they are really big dudes. And so this version had to go with just that. It was only fair. However, as pointed out by many Spec Evo and similar subject creators in the past, you can't just scale up a human being and expect it to be fine and dandy. Squirky blow and all that. Hence, a big part of the design process involved adapting their bodies to greater sizes while still being able to remain bipedal, with elephants and animals like Parasauratherium being the main inspiration behind this. But, you know, bipedal. Another interesting aspect to work on was their intelligence. While evolving from human relatives would make them very smart, many classic portrayals of giants have them being, well, quite the opposite. So I decided to make intelligence not really advantageous to them to account for that including a decrease in manual dexterity in the process. As mentioned, this was a really popular suggestion, so I'm really grateful to all of you who asked to see these big fellas reimagined in the channel. And also, here's a big thank you to all of our researchers and research associates, who support this channel through Patreon and YouTube memberships, and who really helped in bringing this one together. If you too wanted to support the making of these videos, please consider joining in. 
And you also get some nice perks like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe or write a comment telling me of any creature you would like me to give the spec evil treatment in the show. Or if you are still here, then tell us if you think you could fight one of these giants 1v1. Thank you all for watching and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.